Hi, my name is Matt Fox. I'm the VP of Product and Engineering here at Top Left. In this video, I'm going to explain how do you create a Kanban board in Top Left. So it, it's very much about uh, where to click, what to do, uh, you know, what do the certain tabs and form fields do as you're creating a Kanban board. I'm not going to give specific recommendations as to what you should do if you're doing help desk or project management or, or whatnot. Uh, we do have separate videos for the common use cases like that, and you should watch those. We have lots of recommend. I'll have other recommendations in those videos, but this one's just going to be an introduction so that you know what you're doing in the forms uh, once you get to those videos. In this video, I am going to be uh, using our ConnectWise um, uh, application. Uh, if you have uh, Autotask or another PSA, it's going to be very, very similar. So let's dig in. You do need to be an administrator in top left to create a Kanban board. And uh, so if you're an administrator, under the boards menu, you'll see the add board item. So click, go ahead and click there. You're presented with a list of the types of boards that you can create. Uh, we'll just choose the uh, the simple one for tickets. Uh, in ConnectWise, this is both service and project tickets. So then we get the form. Uh, this form has four main tabs, general filters, columns, and portal. So the general tab just uh, gives you kind of various options about how a board works. The filters tab uh, determines which tickets actually appear on the board. The columns tab lets us set up the columns. Uh, those are the key stages of the work as it moves through our life cycle. And then finally, the portal tab allows us to set up options to actually give your customers access, uh, you know, self-serve access to the Kanban boards. Uh, we won't talk about that one today. So uh, starting with the general tab here, we have a name field. Just you know, give it a name that matches uh, what the purpose of the board is. I'll just call this one tickets. The uh, card fields section here allows you to set up exactly which details appear on the cards. You know, they might put more details on a card or fewer details on a card, depending on what you select here. Metrics uh, allows you to set up certain options that have to do with uh, summarizing, uh, for example, logged hours within a certain column and a few other things. Swim lanes is a key one. That one determines how do we group the tickets that appear on the board. If we don't, if we just leave it blank, the tickets won't be grouped at all. We'll just get the columns, and within the columns, all of the tickets will be shown together. Sometimes that uh, is uh, doesn't help us understand really what's going on with that work in your PSA. So you might want to then split it up into uh, different groups. And th there's a variety of fields that you can choose here. Uh, like a common one for almost any use case is the resource swim lane. And that would give you groups for the individual technicians doing the work on uh, on your board here. And so that lets you see things like, uh, you know, which of my engineers is really busy, which ones are not busy enough, and so on. Uh, but as you can see, there's a variety of different choices we can can choose there to determine how are we grouping the tickets on this board. The ranking option will let us set up uh, some uh, automatic ranking capabilities on the board. By default, the uh, the boards are just totally flexible. You can drag the cards wherever you want on the board. Um, you know, top of the column, bottom of the column, middle of the column. They'll just stay wherever you drop them. Uh, but sometimes you want you would prefer that the system ranks them within the columns automatically. Uh, for example, based on uh, you know maybe the oldest tickets at the top uh, would be one example. And so you can use this section to set up those preferences. Uh, that finishes up the general tab. Let's go to the filters tab here. So on the filters tab, as I said, this determines which tickets appear on this board. Um, so we can set up various selections here, which, uh, which determine uh, where do we find the tickets that are going to appear on this board? Uh, now, if you're a ConnectWise user, uh, I would suggest that you choose the ConnectWise board option here. Uh, that might be the only filter that you need to use. You, you are not required to use all of these fields by any means. Uh, if you can uh, just use the ConnectWise board filter and that shows you what you want, then then that's great. And actually, you know, 90% of the time that's true. If you're auto task, you might see, you'll see an option for uh, the queue, and uh, that would be the um, probably the, the one that 90% of the time for you, you just have to choose the queue. And, and then that shows you exactly what you want. Uh, there could be times that you also need to choose the you know, specific resources or people who are doing the work. So you might select them there. Uh, and and there's a, just look through the list. There's quite a variety of filters that you can use here. Let me just tell you two pitfalls to avoid on this tab. So one is using too many filters. Uh, you might go through and uh, and make selections in a lot of these filters. What can happen then is that you finally you see what 
is presented on the board and you see very little. Uh, you don't know what to, uh, uh, you know, you see less, fewer cards than you expected to see. And it might not be clear which of those filters that you chose is causing you to see uh, less than you expected. So um, that can be a bit hard to fix. So uh, instead of using too many filters first, instead uh, use kind of a, a minimal number of filters, for example, just the ConnectWise boards option. And uh, then if you see too much on the board, then you can come back and uh, and add some filters to get it exactly right. Uh, the second pitfall to avoid is making a selection of every choice in a single field. Like, for example, you might say, well, on this board, I want to see tickets no matter what priority they are. You know, whatever priority, I want to see them. So you would go and do this. You might select every priority here. But if you do that, you're, you're really saying, you know what, it doesn't matter what priority it is. Show me it no matter what priority it is. So uh, it would be pre it's better to just not select it at all. Uh, don't don't fill anything in the priorities field in that case. OK, so uh, then we go to the columns tab. And uh, this is the interesting part. This is where we get to define what are the key stages of the life cycle of uh, whatever ticket it's we are showing here. So. I can click add column a couple of times and we'll get a few more choices and then we can set up our column set up here. I'm just going to do the simplest possible column setup that you can have, uh, just to do, doing, and done. I'll give them those names in the columns. And then what we need to do is, uh, actually, let me go back. I'm going to select a, uh, make a selection here in the ConnectWise boards. We'll just say we just want to see tickets that are on the help desk board there. Then I, uh, these are the options, the status options that are available on that help desk board. And now I just simply drag the options, these statuses into this area of, of each column. So I say, okay, uh, if a ticket is in the new status, I want it to appear in the to-do column. And there might be other statuses as well. Uh, maybe ready is also best in the to-do column. To do, uh, doing is maybe, uh, that would be uh, in progress, but maybe also uh, we'll say waiting on client and um, scheduled. And then finally done, that would be canceled, closed, and uh, completed. So uh, this, yeah, that might be all I need to do to set up those columns. Um, notice that I haven't assigned all of the statuses here, and that's fine. Uh, I'm not required to map all of the statuses to a column. But what will happen if there are, for example, if there are tickets in the assigned status and I don't map them to a column, then they won't appear on the board. And that's fine. Sometimes that's exactly what you want. Just uh, be careful that you don't do that by accident. So before you leave here, just have a quick check that any of the statuses you haven't mapped to a column, uh, that that is, is what you want. OK, all I got to do now is click Save, and it will be shown the board. So here we go. We have a Kanban board with three columns, like I specified, 20 tickets in the to-do column, uh, 77 in doing, and 34 in the done column. Uh, a good thing to do the first time you see a board is just check the numbers of tickets that are in there and make sure that kind of is at least in the ballpark of what you expect. If it's not, then uh, you know maybe you expected m many more tickets in the doing column or, or maybe a lot less, then you probably didn't get the filters quite right. So you can easily fix that if you just click edit here beside the title. Then we're just taken back to that form and uh, we can go to the filters tab and you can make changes here. Uh, now, by the way, sometimes you might want to make another board, which is very similar to this board, uh, but is uh, different in a, some minor ways. Like for example, maybe we want to have the same board, but it has a swim lane choice, but it has the same columns that we've, we've already done the work to set up those columns. So we want to reuse those. To do that, I can just click actions at the bottom and then click clone board, and that'll give me a copy of what I've already done, and I can just change the name, change the swim lane, or whatever else I want to change, and save that. And then I've got a, a easily I've made a second Kanban board. And you can also delete the boards uh, by the delete item here. Okay, so that is how you create and manage a Kanban board in top left. Thank you for watching.